Now, um, um, sale twist. Um, this is uh, something you probably all have a fair idea about. But anyway, let me uh, talk about that. Um, uh, air flow over the sea, of course, is not uniform. The flow near the, the, the sea is slower than the flow, the speed of flow further up at about 10 metres height or more, um, simply because of the drag uh, along the sea. And, uh, and uh, it depends on um, the actual change in speed of flow with height depends somewhat on weather conditions and all kinds of other, other things that we're not really concerned about here. Uh, but the main thing is to uh, realize that there is a speed difference between the flow down near the boom and the flow up near the top of the top of the uh, sail. Um, and um, so this can be um, the, the need for twist in the sail comes about because of this. Uh, if we have a boat, say, sailing to windward at, say, five knots, and we have a true wind speed of 10 knots at a true wind angle of 60 degrees, then what you feel on the boat, of course, is a, an apparent wind. And that apparent wind, in this case, has been worked out to be 13.3 knots uh, acting, coming in at an angle of 41 degrees. And of course, that's simply due to the fact that the boat is moving through the water uh, the wind is coming in at this angle, and so what you what you experience on the boat is different from what a person who's uh, fixed in the water experiences. If then the speed of the wind suddenly increases to 15 knots, but the direction does not change, then the apparent wind becomes 18.1 knots. But what what is important for this discussion is the fact that now the angle at which that wind is coming in, the apparent angle uh, of attack of the wind on the boat is now 46 degrees rather than 41. So there's a five degree shift in direction of the apparent wind, even though the true wind, of course, has not shifted at all. So if your sail is designed to have optimum uh, driving force uh, at a certain angle of attack, then you want that angle of attack, uh, you want the sail to twist so that that angle of attack remains the same all the way up. Um, okay, and this, this is just a picture that uh, sort of might explain that a bit better. How the, the green arrows here um, represent the speed of the boat in that direction, which is fixed. The, the, red, the red arrows represent the true wind, which is fixed in direction, but uh, is faster up here than down there. And when you add those green and red arrows together, the, the, the vectors, add them together, then you get a resultant direction of apparent wind, which is these blue arrows which you see twist as we go on up. So that was the reason that some years ago, during the first, during the first time New Zealand won the America's Cup, um, at the um, School of Engineering at uh, University of Auckland, a twisted flow wind tunnel was built. Because the model, uh, you, you want to model sails, uh, and the, the sails, of course, are fixed and not moving as the real boat is. So you therefore must twist the flow in the wind tunnel to simulate uh, a real boat moving forward. And in fact, um, that was originally done on downwind sails in the, the first time we won the America's Cup in San Diego. and. Um, I, I, although um, the New Zealand boat was clearly superior to the American boat around the course, downwind they only at first they were only just superior. Um, and during that last week or two weeks or whatever it took to sail those last 
seven or whatever number of races they had then, seven or nine, uh, they, um, they frantically used this device and improved the design of downwind sails by this means. And during the last few races, the New Zealand boat got faster and faster and even downwind pulled away from the American boat, which it hadn't been able to do in the earlier races. So it proved very useful. And now this thing is, it's the only twisted flow wind tunnel in the world and is now in great demand from a lot of people all around. And of course, the university makes a lot of money out of it. Um, OK, well, um, this talk, well, I think, was advertised as having something to do with, with, um, uh, with the uh, wandering albatross. Um, and uh, those of you who have seen one will know how marvelous they are. And of course, sailors of old always admired the wandering albatross. But little did they realize that the secret of how it could go to windward and how it could rise up to a higher height than what it started from was exactly the same principle as made their sailboats go. Um, the, 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 the difference, of course, is, and, 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 and the secret lies in the fact that the airflow over the sea is non-uniform. As I've just said, a speed of flow near the surface of the water is slower than that further up. So you have various speeds, um, which is analogous to the situation of a sailboat, which is where the airflow must there must be a, a speed between the two media. The water flow and air flow must be moving with respect to one another. But there you have two different media. The albatross only has one medium, the air. And whereas the sailboat uses the two different media simultaneously, the albatross uses a differential in speed of flow sequentially. And so how does it do that? So let me, uh, and this is a bit tricky. So if you, if you don't quite follow it, don't worry about it. Um, th this is a, a simple representation of airflow here. Down here, you've got a slower speed of airflow than up here. And there's a, a, a border between the two. So rather than, I mean, it's very complicated if you, if you try to figure things out with a continuously variable airflow from bottom to top. The C is way down here somewhere. That does not represent C. It just represents a border between a region of faster flow and a region of lower flow. The faster flow has a, and pardon me for using these algebraic symbols, but I don't think there's any other way of doing it. Uh, the faster flow is represented by a number which is labeled U. And that's the, that's the speed of air up here. And down here, the speed of air is less by an amount delta U. That this delta thing is a, a Greek symbol that in, in, in science means a small amount of. So U minus delta U therefore means a slower speed than U itself. OK, so let's assume the albatross starts from a height H up here. And what he does, he flies downwind and also flies down under gravity. So he's going, he's whizzing down and gravity is speeding him up. And so when he gets down to here, his speed is this, capital V, a speed V with respect to the airflow here. OK, then he turns around. He's still got V with respect to this airflow, but now he's going into a slower airflow. So therefore, he's going faster with respect to that airflow by an amount delta U. So now he's going with respect to the air faster. And it's the air which is lifting him. So that's the important parameter. So now he can rise up uh, because he's going faster with respect to the airflow, he can rise up into the region of faster airflow. And when he gets into that region, his, his speed with respect to airflow is increased again 
by another factor delta u. And so then he can rise up to a higher altitude than what he started from without ever flapping his wings. And that's a wonderful sight that you see when you watch albatrosses soaring around. Of course, they use a lot of other tricks like um, the updrafts from waves and all that kind of stuff. But this is the, the basic simple principle. And, um, uh, oh, well, there's some mathematics, but we won't worry about that. That just shows that the difference in heights that he gets up to is indeed dependent upon the difference in speed of flow uh, between the upper uh, region and the lower region. 